as golfers, we're usually trying to work through one swing issue or another, right? Like the moment one thing gets fixed, something else pops up and now you're like, oh, I gotta do this all again. So I struggled with all these for decades until the last few years when I dove deep into fixing my swing and I figured out that there are two things that tend to cause most problems. In this video, we're gonna talk about what those two things are and how to address them. Let's get going. Hey, what's up? I'm Manu. Welcome. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you may have noticed that I'm the use your head better to play better guy. So what am I doing offering swing tips? Aha. This video is not about swing tips. It's about how to use your head better to diagnose your swing problems better so you can A, not practice bad habits, and B, improve faster. Just one last thing before we get into the details, and I swear I'm not just trying to create suspense. This is actually important. So when you hear these two things, you're probably gonna go, too simple. And there's a reason for that. It's the same reason why after 25 years of playing golf, I still have to tell myself to swing smoothly and not kill the ball on every single swing. And the reason is it's one half of this thing called the effort paradox, but basically our subconscious minds tend to think that the more effort we put into something, the better the outcome is going to be. Which means if you swing harder, you're going to have a better outcome. My driving stats will tell you that's not true. Or the more time you spend into researching a golf club, the better that club will be for you. That one might sound familiar. Or in this case, the more complex a swing fix is, the more likely it is to work. And that's not necessarily true. There's a reason that tour pros and great coaches come back to these two core things, and it's the reason is that they work. Enough build up, let's get into it. The two things are your setup and your backswing, and there's sub points to each one of these. So let's go through these in a little bit more detail. Number one, setup. You've probably heard a lot about this already, especially when you're first learning to play. It's a core fundamental, but as with most fundamentals, we tend to kind of glaze over these, right? So I break down setup into four key parts. Grip, stance, alignment, and ball position. You notice how those roll off my tongue? It's because I use them all the time. So I got the first three, grip, stance, alignment, from this book, which I think is a fantastic book. It's a really good read. It's by Butch Harmon. And grip, stance, alignment are the three things that Butch comes back to over and over and over. And his dad, who won the Masters in 1948, used to tell him that. So every time Butch had a problem, come back, grip, stance, alignment. Check those three things before you do anything else. I added ball position because I found it super important. And we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail in a sec. And number two, the backswing. So this is something I discovered for myself recently when I was trying to figure out how to fix my early extension problems. And what I realized was the cause of my downswing problems was that I wasn't in a good position at the top of my backswing. And so I was set up for failure, basically. Basically. And after working on that for a little while, I realized maybe this is applicable to a whole bunch of other things and applying it with some of my friends, figure out, yeah, that's totally true. A great analogy for this is imagine you're throwing a ball. If your wind up is off, so instead of having like an up top wind up, say you have a sidearm or underarm pitch that you're gonna make, it's just much harder to get that pitch right. You can still do it, but it's just gonna be harder because you're not used to this way of doing it and you're not set up in the right spot. And personally, I think there are three parts of the backswing that are really important. The takeaway, your turn and weight shift and your head position, which also covers for a few other things in there. So let's get into it. For each of these, we'll talk about what they are, why they matter and how to notice or adjust them. Let's do it. So the first checkpoint is the grip. Have you ever had a lesson and the first thing the coach tells you is to change your grip and you're like, Thanks, buddy. I'm glad I paid you hundreds of dollars to tell me to change my grip. So there's a lot that's been said about the grip, but the main things that stand out to me are, number one, the grip controls the way that your arms rotate backwards. So with a weird grip, you may not be able to get your arms in the right positions for the downswing that you want. Number two, the way that you hold the club also affects the way the club head hits the ball, right? Club face control comes often from the trigger finger from a good grip. And then the one that tends to get everybody's attention, number three, is that a good grip helps you generate more club head speed. A good example of this is imagine if you're a baseball pitcher and you're trying to throw a fastball, but with a knuckleball grip, it's gonna be really hard. Maybe you're a cricketer and you're trying to bowl a fastball, but with an off spin grip, not really gonna work either, right? It's just hard to do. So how to check and adjust your grip. Well, there's lots of grips out there. I'm not gonna tell you which one to use, but I will tell you to figure out what the ideal grip is for you and then check it fairly often, especially when things aren't working. And a good example of this is the pros. Like for example, Xander, if you look at him when he's setting up to the ball, he checks his grip on every single shot. So must be pretty important. He seems to do okay. We all know who he is. So personally, I check my grip a lot, like every few shots. And even then there's still a little bit of creep left and right. So I tend to use this dope little tool from Amazon. This is called the Skills Grip Trainer. It's great. It's like 15 bucks. It clips onto whatever club you have and you can just use it, you know, every so often to see what's going on. I like it better than the full kind of rubber grips you get that you can put onto a club because A, I don't have to sacrifice a club and B, I can use this with the clubs I use on a regular basis. Really handy. I just leave it in my bag and every so often, especially when I'm on the range, I'll pull it out to like just make sure that, you know, not getting too much creep. So yeah, check it out. And I'd love it if you find it helpful. If you could drop me a comment, let me know that it worked for you. 
So the second component of the setup to check when things are a little out of whack is your stance. Why, and this one's pretty straightforward, if you're in the wrong setup at address, it's gonna force you into the wrong positions in your backswing and your downswing, or you're gonna be working extra hard to try to get into those right positions because you're not set up for success. No pun intended. Like a common thing that I've noticed is a lot of folks tend to bend their knees a little too much at address. Instead of bending at the hips, we tend to bend at the knees. And now that means that you're not able to turn back properly because the knee bend prevents you from a good hip turn. So either you're not turning back properly or you're standing up to be able to turn, which causes a whole bunch of issues on your way back and on your way down. One thing I heard recently that really stuck with me and I use now every time I play is Tiger talking about it in his My Game series on Golf Digest. And he talks about, I build a stance. Every time he talks about hitting a shot, and he's like, build a stance. I love that word, build. And now how to notice and adjust things when your stance might be a little bit out of whack. So first you need to create a good baseline. And for this, get into a good stance and then create a few checkpoints for yourself and write them down so you can have them for the future when things are out of whack and you can't think straight about that. Checkpoints could be things like where your head's at, where's your weight at, is it in the middle, or is it towards one side, where are your hands located. So all these little checkpoints written down are good to come back to when you think you might be drifting a little bit. Another thing I like to do is pick a tour golfer who has a beautiful stance but also a similar body or swing shape to me because if the biomechanics are totally different it's going to be really hard to copy. And that's it. There's not really a ton more to say on this but the stance is super duper important. Remember to to build your stance. So checkpoint number three and the third part of the Butch Harmon trifecta is alignment. And this one's close to my heart because it's something I'm working on a lot recently. And it's also something that's interesting to note that a lot of golfers just don't get right. Like I was playing with a buddy of mine who's like a six handicap a few months ago. And afterwards we were just troubleshooting some stuff and we realized that he didn't actually know how to align himself to the target, which is incredible. Like imagine how good he'd be. He was playing off his six without knowing how to align himself. This guy could get real good. And he has, he's dropped his handicap a couple strokes since. So why this matters? Alignment goes hand hand in hand with stance. If you're not lined up correctly, it's unlikely you're gonna hit the target the way you want to. And so sometimes when you're hitting a fade or a draw, maybe just check your alignment. You might just be doing that because you're lined up poorly and your swing is just fine, but your brain knows that the target's over there, even though your brain's also the thing that lined you up incorrectly. Eh, it's complicated, don't ask me how, but alignment's very important. Alignment also tends to creep over time. So for me, for example, when I get nervous, I tend to set up a little more open to the target. It's good to know these tendencies. I don't know why I do it, but I know it's a tendency and so I double check my alignment, especially when things are getting a little tougher, right? You go back to that pre-shot routine and really kind of focus on hitting your main checkpoints. Another thing I find interesting is that every pro practices with an alignment stick. You ever look at the range before one of those tour events and everyone's got an alignment stick down. You think that these guys would be like really good at this because they've done it a billion times, but still, They've got alignment sticks down there and surprising that we don't. So how to address alignment issues? Well, one, like stance, create some alignment checkpoints. So for me, these are my feet, my knees, my hips, my shoulders, kind of where everything is pointing, not just one thing, because you might have one thing wide open and the other thing correctly set up. And second, get some alignment sticks if you don't have some already. It's kind of fun buying golf stuff. I love buying golf stuff. The thing that's really weird and absurd is it's amazing how lazy I can get when I'm on the range and not pull out my alignment sticks to set them up. Like I have to push myself to do so. It's freaking weird. Absolutely absurd. The thing that made it a little bit more fun is I got myself a really fun alignment stick cover. Yes, these are a thing and they sell them. I'm so glad that somebody found a way to make money off of this thing. But anyway, I'm easily amused and so I got one of these and now I feel cool every time I pull out my alignment sticks. So whatever works, helps you set up, go for it. And the fourth component of setup is ball position, which is something that I've really started realizing a lot more recently. Probably should have figured out earlier since it's such a big part of Hogan's book, like we've all seen that diagram everywhere. But you know, better late than never, I'm here now. So the reason ball position is important is because it affects where the club face is pointing when you hit the ball and whether you catch the ball at the low point of your swing or maybe before the low point, so you might hit it down on it a little bit, get too much spin, a little hacking into the ground. Or maybe if it's too far forward, you catch it thin and don't hit it well anyway. So thin, heavy, high, low, left, right. Yeah, I'd say ball position might matter a tiny bit. So how to notice and adjust ball position when it gets a little out of whack. I mean, you kind of know what your correct ball position is, maybe note that down. And then when you notice it's starting to creep or you notice there might be a problem, check it, bring it back to neutral. If you're looking for a good model of this, both Tiger and Ben Hogan did do this the same way, which is the ball is always the same distance from the front foot and the back foot moves back and forward depending on which club they're hitting. So with driver, it's further back. With wedge, it's further forward. But there's lots of different ways to do this. You can find the right one for you. Just keep checking it and bring it back to neutral. 
Okay, now onto the backswing. So the importance of the backswing is something I discovered in the last year or so, because as mentioned, I was having trouble with early extension and I just couldn't get, no matter what I tried, I just couldn't get my left hip to move the way I wanted it to move. I did all this research, just wouldn't work. And then a former pro buddy of mine told me I wasn't loading up my right hip enough in the backswing. And I was like, thanks man, that, that wasn't the question. The question was, how do I fix this early extension? But Appreciate the input. Turns out he was right. Eventually, after a whole ton of research, I figured out that loading up the right hip actually makes it much easier to rotate the left hip in the right way, and at least that's the way it worked for me. And so that got me thinking, what other backswing stuff is there that fixes downswing issues? Turns out, a lot of it. So now, whenever I have an issue, I go back to my setup and backswing to see what I might be doing incorrectly on the way back, and then that might be causing the downswing problem, and it's fixed a whole bunch of issues for me. So when I think about the backswing, I think about three core pieces the takeaway, the turn and weight shift, and the head position, which encompasses a couple of other things. Let's start with takeaway. So in my honest opinion, the takeaway is hands down the biggest issue for most of us. It should be more like hands in the biggest issue for most of us. But seriously, I think the takeaway is hands down the biggest issue for most of us, all the way from beginners, all the way through to people like Ricky Fowler, who, yeah, for him, it's a deliberate, this flat swing that he used to have, but now that he's made it a little bit more square, better takeaway, things are a lot better. He's had a whole bunch of top 20 finishes his last few starts. And I think as of today, he's up to number 52 in the world, which is fantastic. Ricky's the man. But still, takeaway, big deal. For me, it's very close to home. I say this for a lot of things. Turns out I've had a lot of problems. This is very close to home for me because I had this problem for 20 years. And about three years ago, when I finally went to a coach who noticed this and told me to fix it, yeah, I don't know why it took several coaches to get there, but I'm very thankful for Jeff. He's awesome. Uh, when my coach finally noticed this and told me, my handicap dropped almost instantly from what was, I said was a 10, was probably more like a 12. It was a little bit ego in there to a six in like a few months because I was finally able to take the club back properly and deliver it to the ball better. So in general, in my humble opinion, getting a good takeaway is the most important thing that we can do for our swings. Even more important than having a good setup. Yes, I said that, I'm gonna stand by it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's true, at least in my experience it's been true, so we'll stick with that. The key is it's really important. So a bad takeaway makes it really hard to get into the right spots at the top of the backswing, which makes it hard to get into the right spots when you're coming down on the downswing. And for most of us, we tend to have, especially beginners, we tend to have an inside takeaway, which means when you get to the top of the backswing, there's no space to shallow. So the only place to come back from is over the top. And now you're gonna spend ages trying to fix your hip turn or something else to fix this over the top swing, when in reality, it's probably caused by the fact that you took the club back too far inside. Another one of those things where the backswing is actually the fix, but we tend to spend a lot more time on the downswing. So how to notice and adjust when it's out of whack. Find a good drill and then note down the checkpoints like you have with everything else, writing them down, really important. And then you can go back to those every so often. Finding a good video, there's a ton of them online. This is my favorite one, it's from Eric Cogorno. I have no affiliation with him, I just really like this video. And this video really helped me, especially the alignment stick drill. Hey, you already went and bought yourself those alignment sticks and this beautiful cover, so might as well use them, even at home. So the alignment stick drill where you put it at the end of the club and, and rotate, I found to be fantastic and really useful. I've linked it down below in the description if you want to take a look. Next, turn and weight shift. I put these two together because kind of like love and marriage, it's hard to have one without the other. Do you like that Married to Children flashback? Also Sinatra if you're that way inclined, but for me, that song's always gonna be connected to Al Bundy, so you're welcome. But anyway, back to turn and weight shift. This one's also super important. You're probably wondering, why am I saying that every one of these is so important? It's because I only listed the important ones, right? Anyway, so back to turn and weight shift. The whole thing about turn and weight shift is when you turn correctly and shift your weight correctly, you're then able to drop the club into the slot properly and generate the power that you need. So if you're not doing that properly, you're probably gonna have trouble hitting the ball correctly. And so all these issues we might feel with our downswing may have happened because we just didn't make a proper turn on the way back and shift our weight correctly on the way back. As I mentioned in the previous one about early extension, it's like with a pitcher, right? The pitcher cannot throw the ball hard enough if they don't get a full turn on the way back before they chuck it at the batter. And on a personal note, as I mentioned earlier, I found that getting my weight to my right side is really important to prevent early extension. But sometimes I rush and I don't get my weight all the right side and turn properly and then everything is off. And I think that's something a lot of us do fairly often. And we know it, we say, oh, I rushed that shot. We don't really stop to think about what that meant. What does it mean by I rushed that shot? Does it just mean that your brain was going too fast or was it that you didn't do X, Y, and Z? And that's something I actually heard from Ernie Els previously. His swing thought when things are starting to get a little bit nervous or things aren't going well for him is to complete the backswing. And that's his way of not rushing. So a full turn and weight shift properly, fully complete the backswing before he hits these shots, and then you become Ernie Els. 
So how to notice and adjust this? Uh, you're probably gonna get sick of me saying this, but it's all the same, right? Find yourself a good drill to try and then write down your checkpoints, which you, you can then run through when you're on the range before a round or when you're practicing. And anytime you make a bad swing, just take a second to consider what did my turn and weight shift feel like on that shot? Was it where I wanted it to be or is it something I could focus on on my next shot to make it a little bit better? And lucky last, backswing part number three, head position which in my mind is a good proxy for a couple of different things, including head position itself. And so why this matters is when the head moves more or less than normal, it messes with our hand-eye coordination, makes it harder at the ball. And you can also use head position as a proxy for things like, are you staying in your posture? Or are you standing up or bending over a little bit too much? Or are you swaying off the ball, right? All of those mess with the hand-eye coordination and make it harder to hit the ball, which causes problems. In terms of how to notice and adjust for these, well, you guess number one, find yourself some good checkpoints and write them down. Personally, I try a few swings trying to keep my head fairly still because for me that's what works best is my head is super still while the rest of my body kind of rotates around it. For you, it might be moving a little bit more or a little bit less, unlikely a little bit less, but hey, you never know. But in any case, your mileage may vary. Try different things that work for you and come up with a good drill that you can use just to remind yourself of what a good head position is without that swing, without that posture movement, without like all the extra motions that we have. And go back to that when the shots maybe aren't working out the way you want them to just to see if that might be an easy fix instead of going down some complicated rabbit hole of trying to find a swing fix. And that is it. Those are the things I like to try before I go down a deep research hole of trying to figure out exactly what might be wrong with my swing. And 80, 90% of the time, setup and backswing fix most of them. I hope the next time you're working on fixing something or you're at the range just practicing, maybe rewind the swing a little bit and see if your setup and backswing were good enough. So I'm gonna try out. Another thing to look at during your setup is what kind of lie the ball is on, and you can find out more about that in this video right here. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Keep hanging out, being cool, and see you next time.